So how's everybody doing? Good, I hope. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over some of the planimetric and skeletal sculpture that we're working on. I'm going to talk about some of the choices that I want to make at this stage of the game, which is about, I would say, somewhere between halfway and two-thirds of the way through, because we have our, we have our uh, proportions in place, more or less. I'm going to start doing detailed refinement, uh, getting really getting into the anatomical landmarks and making sure they're proportionally accurate to one another on either side. I'm going to split the head really clearly between the skull and the planimetric side. And I'm just going to start to lay out proportions really with a sense of form in mind so that I'm focusing on shapes. So I'm going to keep my shapes really closely defined to what I want them to look like towards the end of my sculpture. I always like to go back to major anatomy, so you can see I'm going to the zygomatic bone because it's such a center point for the skull. Always uh, getting back into the drawing habit, making sure that I mark things off and then um, refining the shapes really specifically, looking at curves, looking at the width of the zygomatic bone, and then looking how it kind of moves into and shifts into that high peak of the cheekbone and around the eye socket. I think one of the things that's widely overlooked is angles when you're sculpting. So I'm holding up this little miniature skull that I have to really see the angle or the uh, axis that the cheekbone comes down and that the zygomatic bone actually begins to protrude. So, you know, really focusing on where placement is in relationship to the uh, anatomical landmark of the larger skull, the cranium itself, and where it sits in relationship to the eye. I'm also paying attention to uh, recesses in the skull, how shapes protrude, and then uh, how they intersect with the skull underneath the forms. I want to make sure that if I see a hollow that I'm pushing into that hollow, that I'm really refining shapes in relationship to whether or not they're curved or they're, they have a hard edge to them. So you can see I'm, I'm pushing the clay in here into the temporal brow because I really want that peak to show. Uh, obviously on the planimetric side it's a shift in plane but on the skull side it really kind of references how the uh, how the skull although it's uh, spherical in shape really at the sides where the temporal brow is uh, really gets flattened out uh, almost that that concept where you're taking an orange and you're slicing the sides of the orange off You know, one of the things that I always want to remind everyone is to continue to turn your sculpture. You know, make sure that um, you're looking at it from all sides. Uh, I always draw on it. You know, I pull out my tools and make marks, uh, and mark off where things are. I'll make a little line to kind of remind me where proportions are. And you can see that I have that center line consistently running down the center of the skull. Those are always there to kind of help me balance out my proportions as I'm building through the model. Once again, I'm, I'm going into my nose, and the nose gets really battered as I'm sculpting. So I'm repeatedly moving back and forth through that part of the face until I get to a point where I feel like the whole face is up to par. And then I make sure to kind of be aware of where my, my wrist is or my palm is so I'm not squishing those anatomical landmarks. You can see that the eye is still pretty hollow. Uh, the back of the head is still unrefined and the mouth still needs some work. So by the end of this, which is about two hours of sculpting, I'm going to start to kind of leave the nose alone and make sure that I don't um, hassle it. At this stage, what I really want to do is just make sure that I'm building out accurate proportions in relationship to my model that's next to me, and always trying to keep those silhouette shapes as accurate as possible. I'm going underneath the plane of the nose, going back and thinking about angles, and coming in and drawing, and then I always come back in with my drawing tool and make sure that I'm you know, finding those planes, 
making sure they're facing the right way at the right uh, angle and have the right sense of design. You know, sculpting is this uh, both subtractive and additive method in terms of workflow. So uh, know when to pick up your tools. You know, I always over sculpt in the early stages so I can take material out really slowly and carefully kind of adjust my shapes and then really reference uh, my anatomical knowledge as well as my understanding of the model that's in front of me to mimic and figure out and feel how those planes exist in reality. And this is such an important concept when it comes to drawing the human head because if I can tactily feel and um, understand how those planes begin to shift, I can then transfer that information to my pencil so much more readily and convert it to 2D information. So I'm not always dependent on trying to reinvent the wheel. I, I can you know, both use the physical tactile relationship that I have with the model and this whole sculpting process is a way to translate that information to my drawings. Once again, I'm really trying to get those angles correct. I'm holding it side by side to my uh, planometric model that you can't see in the picture frame. But what I'm trying to do is really almost imagine that I'm holding a pencil up against that cheekbone and that my model is actually following that same slope so that it feels like it's actually uh, finding that same dimensional relationship in space. Take your time. These are the details that really make the difference and uh, begin to elevate your understanding of how planes begin to uh, adjust in relationship to value and light logic, but also in relationship to the anatomical landmarks of the skull. You can see how at this stage my planes are uh, really starting to feel a little bit more realistic in relationship to the form. So once I have the, the planar proportions down, I'm switching sides and I want to make sure that my skull proportions feel the same. I don't want to get obsessed with one side and then refine, refine, refine it until it's done. What I'm doing is really focusing on those major planometric shapes, which is really right around the cheekbone and the zygomatic bone, the top of the head and the jaw. Uh, those three or four planes are going to dictate everything. I don't, I don't care about the smaller ones at this stage. If the proportions aren't right, everything's going to fall apart. So once I have those major shapes in place, I'm going to flip to the other side of my skull and really get those skull shapes uh, looking like they're in sync with the face that I've created. So really comparing proportions from one side to the other and not just saying, hey, one side is a skull and the other side is a planometric head, really thinking about them as one single head seen in two different ways. It would be a big mistake for me here at this stage to just focus on the skull and refine, refine, and refine it until I feel like it's exactly where I want it to be. And then I flip the head to the other side, it's gonna look like two different faces. We wanna make sure that that head that we're sculpting feels like one face, feels like one individual, uh, feels like one anatomical head as it runs from left to right and top to bottom. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm taking the time here to really refine uh, the mandible, get my zygomatic bone and the mandible kind of in place with each other. You can see what I'm going to do is begin to take out the major landmarks where the mandible begins to intersect underneath the zygomatic bone. I'm looking at the left and right of the jaw and comparing the two shapes uh, on both the planometric side to the uh, skull side of the anatomy. I kind of got a sense that it was getting a little bit too thin. So I'm going to add some material down here and build up that side of the cheekbone now that I have the mandible in place. I can kind of see those proportions a little bit more clearly. I wanted to kind of play through this part of the video a little bit more in real time so that you can see how slowly I'm actually applying the clay. Uh, it's really important to note that what I'm doing is uh, specific to building accurate forms. You really want to take your time and size up how much material you're adding to build up those proportions a little bit more carefully so that you're not just jumping the gun and adding too much material and having to go back in and subtract it out again. Then you end up doing too much back and forth. If I can slow my process down, really gauge how I'm building up uh, clay on the surface, it really is going to help me just move forward in the process of, of building the model rather than continually um, making corrections to uh, parts that I've added on or subtracted off. So this last bit of time lapse is the last two hours of my process, maybe about an hour and a half. Uh, I'm moving pretty slow, but I had to speed it up just so you can kind of see what I'm building. I'm really beginning to refine those shapes, taking the nose, cutting out the nasal bone, looking at the planes of the nose, making sure that they're right and in place. And then you're going to see me switch to really, really, really fine tools as I begin to pull out and design those curves really paying attention to proportions uh, and shapes more than anything as I begin to build those curves out. And don't forget to create a depth difference between the left and the right side of your head so we can see that the skull and the planes are referencing two different anatomical landmarks. All right, good luck everybody. Look forward to seeing your sculptures. <laughs>